Remember, a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Tonight, from Hollywood, the makers of Hallmark cards bring you another in their exciting new series of broadcasts on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. Each week, Hallmark will bring you true-to-life stories of actual persons who, in their own way, have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Presented on the Hallmark Hall of Fame by our distinguished host, Mr. Lionel Barrymore. gentlemen, and welcome to the Hallmark Hall of Fame, where each Sunday night we dramatize a true story for you, a true story about real people to whom we respectfully dedicate this Hallmark Hall of Fame. And tonight we shall have a special guest after our dramatization, whom I'm sure you'll all want to meet. Tomorrow, once again, the cry of play ball will unsettle this happy land. Tons of hot dogs, Niagara's of pop will be consumed. Millions of healthy grandmothers will perish suddenly. And their funerals will be held, oddly enough, at Yankee Stadium, Shide Park, or Ebbets Field. The great American spectacle of baseball will be on. Names of great and beloved baseball players are known to us. But... Do we know the man who more than anyone else is responsible for baseball as we know it today? Well, tonight the Hallmark Hall of Fame gives you the thrilling true story of Henry Chadwick, the father of baseball. Now here's Frank Goss from the makers of Hallmark Cards. When you're looking for a way to say something to someone you care for, look for a Hallmark card and you'll find the card you want to send. Because Hallmark cards are designed to say what you want to say, just the way you want to say it, with the good taste you demand of anything that bears your signature. That's why Hallmark on the back of a greeting card has come to mean you cared enough to send the very best. Lionel Barrymore appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Small Town Girl, starring Jane Powell and Farley Granger. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the first act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. I call the honored role of Tyrus and Polis, Connie and Tris, of Dizzy, Dazzy, Daffy and Hack, Casey, Bobo, Preacher, Teacher, Rabbit and Gabby, Kai Kai, Satch, Demerge, Babe, Lou. All of you great of baseball, your attention, please. Your attention, please. You Americans, baseball fans or not, Joe and Mabel, Tom and Dick and Harriet, your attention, please. Your attention, please. Americans fond of sports, fond of first names, fond of colorful nicknames and of clean sportsmanship, meet plain Henry. But boys, boys, you don't play cricket with a round bat. You use a flat bat, don't you see? At least we did in Exeter, England, you know. In 1840, Henry Chadwick of Exeter, England, now native of Brooklyn, saw some boys playing a curious game which he thought was cricket. Or at least the English rounders, well, it wasn't. It was 4 0 cat. Henry tried the game, and first time at bat almost slammed the ball into Manhattan across the river. From that historic moment, Henry Chadwick had won his Brooklyn citizenship. And from that moment, Henry Chadwick, champion cricketer back in England, became a man with a mission. They're Americans, Mother. They love games, and they play them with all their hearts. But they don't have a game. Let them play cricket. It's not American, Mother. 
What about that mixed-up game those, uh, those New York knickerbockers amuse themselves with? That's just it, Mother. They amuse themselves with a curious game of, of baseball. They're a group of wealthy gentlemen playing under their own rules for their private amusement. That's no good, Mother. They need national rules, national organization. There must be something I can do. Oh. I was wondering when you'd come to that. Mother, could you spare me three days a week and Sundays if... if I joined the Excelsior Baseball Club and gave those knickerbockers a lesson? <laughs> Dr. Daniel I. Adams, Secretary, Knickerbocker Baseball Club of New York. Sir, the Excelsior Club at its last meeting made the following resolution that the Excelsior Club engage the Knickerbocker Club in a friendly game of baseball to be played at your early convenience. Very truly yours, Henry Chadwick, Secretary, Excelsior Baseball Club. <laughs> He almost struck me with a ball. What do you want him to strike you with, a bat? Well, that's a strange attitude, sir. From Play a... ball. Not until you rule fairly on that last pitch. Thank you. But I wasn't ready. I was talking to you, umpire. Play ball or get off the field, Chadwick. Very well. Pitch. <laughs> ball streaks past the outfield for a sure long hit. But the crowd surges out onto the field, roughing the players, stealing the ball, jostling and trampling Chadwick. Excelsior, off the field, men. Let's get out of here. Mr. Chadwick, I've come to offer the apologies of every member of the Knickerbocker Club for this afternoon's disgraceful occurrence. Thank you, Dr. Adams. You're rather badly bruised. May we offer you our club physician, or may I help? Thank you, sir. I'll just rest here under the stands and go home. Why were they hostile to me? They used to cheer my hitting and fielding. Henry, if you're fine hit today, Ed won the game, certain gentlemen would have given up a handsome profit. Profit? Your hit was sure to ruin their investment. Investment? Gamblers? Yes, sir. Hmm. Dr. Adams, are we to stand by helplessly while baseball is turned into a lottery and a cheat for the profit of a few dishonest men? That is precisely what is happening, Henry. Then we must prevent it. Now then. Uh, how? Yes, Henry. How? Dr. Adams had no answer, Henry? None, Mother. Oh, there'd be no gambling on cricket if this were Exeter. Oh, come, Mother. There'll be gambling wherever there can be two outcomes to any matter. Not when your father played, Henry. Your father played a good game of cricket. But he also wrote editorials for his newspaper. Do you think I could write, Mother? Would they listen to me? One of the finest cricket champions in America. Well, I think the people of America like baseball and want it. But they want it fair and straight, and they'll get it fair and straight if I can do anything about it. Thank you, Mother. That's it. Oh! Somebody threw something through the window. What, what is it, Henry? It's a note in an envelope with money in it. Money, Henry? Wrapped around a baseball. Well, what does the note say? Uh, hit safely once tomorrow, and that's all. And you can keep the change. Oh, I can tell you when your father played cricket, such Mother, a thing would... the window is badly broken already. You won't mind, will you, if I... And it's not cricket, Mother. It's baseball. <laughs> In just a moment, we return to the second act of the Hallmark Hall of Fame. 
Every woman who has children to care for is familiar with this ageless question. Mother, what'll I do? May come on a rainy day when the youngsters can't go out and play, or it may be asked when the little folks are tired of their toys and bored with their usual games. Tonight, I want to suggest a really constructive pastime that will keep your old boys and girls busy for hours on end. One that will teach them to be thoughtful of others, too. Simply supply them with Hallmark May Baskets. You see, Hallmark May Baskets are bright, pretty baskets that children can put together without scissors or glue. Once they're made, they can be filled with a few candies or flowers and left on the doorsteps of playmates or grown-up friends. May baskets are a wonderful way to celebrate the happy custom of May Day and bring out the true spirit of this glad season. And the cost of Hallmark May baskets is low. Just 50 cents for a package of five different designs. So why not get yours one day soon? You'll know Hallmark May baskets by the Hallmark and Crown on the package. The symbol you look for on your greeting cards when you carry enough to send the very best. And now Lionel Barrymore brings you the second act of our true story of Henry Chadwick. Angry and aroused, defiant of the gamblers, Henry Chadwick continues his tremendous batting to the deepening displeasure of the speculators. In the offices of the Long Island Star, he pushes an angry pen as defiantly as he swings a bat. Unless there is some sort of overall control in baseball, this growing national sport is in deadly peril of its existence. There must be public anger and official action over abuses. Let the game be organized, into leagues perhaps, and for honest profit, and not for exploitation by thieves and hooligans. Organization, that's the cure for the rot that now threatens baseball. The gambling and game fixing continue. Rowdyism and violence add discredit to the game. Baseball loses favor more and more. Teams dissolve. The famous Knickerbocker Club considers disbanding. But stubbornly, Henry Chadwick takes his great excelsiors on tour, trying to save the game. In Richmond, Virginia, Henry has one of his finest and most significant days. Henry circles the bases while a suspicious crowd applauds indifferently. Suspicious. Did the pitcher let Henry hit safely for a price? Game's over. Henry Chadwick emerges, alone and unhappy, from the crude clubhouse. Starts across the primitive diamond. The stands are empty, but a lone carriage approaches, and from the shadow of the stands... Hello? Uh, hello. Well, you might meet a lady something like halfway. Oh. <laughs> you must think this is very unconventional of me, but my escort refused to introduce us, and I had to tell you, you play a lovely game of baseball. Lovely? You write almost as well as you play. Thank you. Tell me, if you receive a very proper invitation to dine with us, from Father, of course, would you come? Oh, why, I'd, I'd be delighted, I, I think. Mother will never consent to a ball player, but she will to a writer. But Father hates writers and adores ball players. <laughs> I'll try to remember which to be to whom. Go ahead. I would give you a lift into town, but it might give Richmond's eyebrows an even greater lift. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chad. Uh, good evening, Miss... Uh, Miss... Box. Isn't it awful? <laughs> good evening, Miss Box. Catherine Box. It gets worse as it goes along, you see. I like it all right. Oh. Well, that distresses me more than you realize, because I've just been... Thinking of changing. Changing it? Get up, Eugenie. It's a beautiful. 
beautiful girl, Miss Botts. Oh, dear. Catherine, if you please. Catherine. The next logical step is Kathy. Uh, <coughs> Kathy, uh, how did I manage at dinner? Well, the writer was frequently uncouth, but the baseball player was a model of urbanity. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. So am I, Henry. About what? Well, Henry, this fight you're making for honest baseball, is it really worth it? Kathy, every nation needs its own tradition. Its national sport is part of its national tradition and character. A nation needs its heroes of peacetime as well as war. Heroes in armor are not enough. They... Oh, oh dear, I'm boring you. No. I say America can grow a vast breed of heroes of every sort. Men to bring smiles and admiration to men's lips and children's eyes. Men who, without shedding blood, can bring honor to their country. Chadwick? No, oh, no, no. I mean great men, heroes. Chadwick. You're laughing at me. Perfect gales of laughter, as you can see for yourself. Kathy, I've got to go back to New York. Will I hear from you? I don't know. Well, it doesn't matter. As you'll hear from me, Mr. Chadwick. <laughs> Yes, sir? You're Henry Chadwick. I know who I am. Who are you? Glenn's the name. Glenn. And your business with the Long Island Star? Oh. Oh, I see you're writing another article against the bad, unscrupulous gamblers. State your business, sir. In tomorrow's match with the Sabres, you will sing somebody once to uh, appear sincere. After that, you will be wise to pop up or uh, strike out. Anything else? Glenn? Yes. Tear up that editorial you're writing and see that you don't write any more of them. No inducements. Currency in an envelope. Premium. Lose that game. Stop printing editorials against us. And when you're asked to vote on a new league of baseball clubs to regulate baseball I've been hearing about, vote against it. Get out. Oh, um, by the way... I hear that Miss Catherine Botts is in town for the game. I warn you, Glynn. Cooperate tomorrow and see colorful whales in Normandy on your honeymoon. Otherwise, well, uh, <laughs> get out! Thanks. And uh, you will tear up that editorial, huh? Talk. Almost over. Henry Chadwick has a single to his credit and several pop ups and strikeouts. The tying and winning run are on base for the Excelsiors. Henry is young. He's in love. Baseball is just a game. Why be a fool for a foolish game? Swinging. Very realistically, too. One strike left to lose the game. The stands grow sullen and still. In the stands, Kathy and Dr. Adams of the Knickerbocker Club almost grimly await the next pitch. Two strikes. Oh, hit it, Henry, please. It's uh, pretty dark. Then why are the stands so angry with Henry? Oh, they always suspect pressure by the interests. It's hard to blame them more, Henry. Dr. Adams. You don't think Henry would actually... Oh. You're ready to go, Dan. He's out! Henry! No, no, he's not out. Look, he's, he's running. The, the captain dropped the third strike. It's a safe ball. Run! Henry, go in! Oh, bad for the first. Run, Henry! Run! One run! Two runs! Yes, and I think the 
for his very life. Indeed, gentlemen of the League of Baseball Clubs, I found myself today cheering for the wrong club. <laughs> Henry Chadwick, this newly formed league with all its promise thanks you for your courage and skill in your fight to rid baseball of rowdyism and gambling. We summon you, sir, to the chairmanship of this league to adopt rules and standards of play and of conduct for national baseball. Uh, gentlemen, today on the playing field, I confess I couldn't see that ball. <laughs> I shudder to think what history might have thought of me if the catcher didn't drop that third strike. Uh, they'd have read your auditorial against those ruffians. It was a scorcher, Henry. Yes. Oh, I'd written a much milder one, but I was told to tear it up. And tear it up, I did. <laughs> now, candidly, I no longer have any fear for my own safety or for the future of baseball. It has been my modest dream to give the country of my adoption a great national sport of its own. I foresee a nation of great cities and quiet villages, of little boys and elderly boys, and every great city and every smallest hamlet Boys and girls of all ages, celebrating heroes in the happy sunlit days to come, celebrating peaceful heroes at home plate. <laughs> Chadwick, English immigrant youth, took the rudimentary baseball he found in America and molded and organized and welded it into the great national game it is today. For years, he was one of the game's leading players, and continuing as a crusading sports writer, he defended the game from attack and from corruption, building it into full acceptance by the American people. Reason enough why Henry Chadwick is today called the father of baseball. We'll be back with our special guest in just a moment. But first, our friend Frank Goss has a little story of his own to tell you. It's about a familiar triangle. A boy, a baseball bat, and a broken window. Isn't it true that part of the effectiveness of the things we say is a matter of timing, of saying something at the right moment? I thought of this today when I read a note from a little boy in my neighborhood who had sent a baseball crashing through my window, and the note simply said, Mr. Goss, I'm sorry I smashed your window. Signed, Johnny. That was all. But Johnny has made a friend for life because he said the right thing at the right time. Now, most, most of us rarely need to write a letter of apology, but we often want to say something special to our friends and see that they receive our message at the right time. That's why so many people have found Hallmark Cards the ideal ambassador of friendship because it's always possible to find a Hallmark card that says what you want to say, just the way you want to say it. And because you can find a Hallmark card made especially for the occasion, it always reaches your friend at just the right time to say, happy birthday, hope you're feeling better, or just to say, hello, I'm thinking of you. And you can count on it. The familiar Hallmark and crown on the back of your card will give an added meaning to your message, for it means always you cared enough to send the very best. And now here again is Lionel Barrymore. Tomorrow, the full spectacle of American baseball unfolds. Tonight, our Hallmark Hall of Fame is deeply honored to pay tribute to one of baseball's very greatest, the pride of the Yankees, and for all time, a credit to baseball, the late Lou Gehrig. To us, he represents all the virtues and sportsmanship that Henry Chadwick stood for. And so, as our special guest, we have Mrs. Lou Gehrig, 
speaking transcribed to us from New York. Mrs. Gehrig, we don't have to review Lou's special greatness. He was among the very first in skill. He was the very best in good humor and good sportsmanship. Few men have done for any calling what Lou did for baseball. Thank you, Mr. Barrymore. Not just for your gracious words about Lou, but especially for your recognition of the importance of baseball to the American way of life. With the opening of another major league season tomorrow, I too think this is a good time for us all to reflect on the many contributions the game has made. Lou was always aware of what baseball meant to America in terms of good sportsmanship, team play, and a keen competitive spirit. Therefore, Mr. Barrymore, it is indeed a pleasure to join with you and millions of others in paying tribute tonight to America's favorite game. Thank you, Mrs. Gehrig. On behalf of all Americans, may I express America's great appreciation and unforgetfulness of a great ball player and a very great person. Next week on the Hallmark Hall of Fame, we will pay tribute to the man who was recognized as the father of our American drama, William Dunlap, as we dramatize his true and fascinating story. There's going to be another special night for us all, to be sure not to miss. We must be listening. Our Hallmark Hall of Fame is every Sunday. Our producer and director is William Gay. Our script tonight was written by Milton Geiger. Until next Sunday, then, this is Lionel Barrymore saying good night. <laughs> for Hallmark cards that are sold only in stores that have been carefully selected to give you expert and friendly service. Remember a Hallmark card when you care enough to send the very best. Our cast tonight included Whitfield Connor as Henry Chadwick, Lorene Tuttle as Catherine Botts, Ted DeCorsi as Dr. Adams, Constance Cavendish as the mother, Peter Leeds as Glynn, and Byron Kane as the umpire. On Sunday afternoon, April 26th, there will be a special Hallmark Hall of Fame program. Hallmark Cards will present Mr. Maurice Evans in his two-hour television production of William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Consult your paper for time and channel. This is Frank Goss saying goodnight to you all until next week at this same time when we present another true-to-life story of actual persons who, in their own way, have contributed to a better world for all of us to live in. Next Sunday, we honor the father of American drama, William Dunlap, on the Hallmark Hall of Fame. This is the CBS Radio Network. This is KMBC.